guys so today's video is going to be my favorite video that i film at the beginning of each month and that is going to be my reading wrap up for the month of may and i read 15 books this month um i actually read less physical books this month than i did in other forms of reading um this month i was really trying to be more experimental about the way that i read um, because I actually saw this on one of my favorite um, YouTube channels. I think his name is The Book Guy or That Book Guy or something. I think I mentioned it last month that this was how I wanted to read more books. Um, so I decided to not just read physical books this month, but also really take advantage of books on my Kindle. And I actually ended up reading eight physical books six books on my Kindle and one audiobook. So what I was doing is that I was kind of listening to his advice about different formats of reading is actually a great way of um, like finishing books or just like reading more. He actually says that it helps him get through more books if he changes up the way that he reads. And also if you change like the setting of where you read like I was reading a lot more outside this past month because it's gotten so warm so I've been reading outside my house a lot on the porch and it's been really really great I just love you know reading listening to the birds chirp and all of that it's just really peaceful and relaxing when my when my mom isn't home when she's home it's a little bit more annoying but when she is not home it's a little bit easier for me to read a little bit more like every time I go outside and I'm reading a book she thinks that I'm like upset or something and I'm like no I'm just literally relaxing and I want to read outside so I got through eight physical books and six books on my Kindle and I was so happy to read books on my Kindle this month because I really did want to take advantage of reading on my Kindle so I'm just so happy that I got through that many books um and I finished one audiobook so let's go ahead and get started so the first two books that I wanted to read this month were both 2024 releases I believe they both came out at the very end of April and the first book that I wanted to read this uh may was powerful by lauren roberts and this was the novella that came out in preparation for her next book which is um why did it go back to home i didn't want it to go back to home i just pulled that book up why did it go back to something that i didn't pull up now i gotta pull up the book again sorry Oh my god, Goodreads annoys me sometimes. Like, the way that it loads is so annoying. So, anyway. So, this was the story of, um, oh my god, why is this annoying the shit out of me? Let me just open it up. Of Adina, which is Peyton's best friend in Powerful. And we found out, like, a few months ago that we were going to get Adina's story. And I was really excited for this, and I still really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It wasn't quite 5 star for me, and I had a feeling it wasn't going to be. Because honestly, this book was pretty much a romance. It was not a romanticy in any way. It wasn't even really fantasy, to be honest. Um... I mean, we find out, like, one or two things about Adina that are a bit more fantasy-based. But besides that, there's really no magical anything going on in this. It's mostly about her falling in love with this other character um, that you find out about. But I think that he's going to play a big role in Reckless and probably the rest of the series. So I think that this was also her way of introducing this character as well and I really ended up liking him I really liked his banter with Adina I forget what his name is he doesn't say his name Mac his name is Mac um but it was really just about like their love story and there wasn't really any magical anything really going on 
but it was building up to the events of the final test that the elites have to go through in Powerless, but it was all from Adina's point of view and not Payton's this time. And the reason why that this book was not five star for me was... What's funny is that I've been watching this other reviewer that I really like. I forget her name, but she really did not like Powerless um, because she kept on saying that Lauren Roberts has, like, such an obsession with mentioning sticky buns as being, like, the base of Adina and Peyton's friendship because they're like thieves and they they don't really have that much money they are pretty much poverty stricken in powerless that um the one thing that they really concentrate on stealing is sticky buns but she you overuses it so much in like the first 100 pages of this novella that it started to get annoying so, um, so anyway, it was really good though, the last 50 pages, because the way that Lauren Roberts writes about death is so beautiful. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone that hasn't read Powerless or this novella yet, because if I tell you what happens, it's going to spoil the story. But it was really enjoyable, but that first 100 pages that they kept on mentioning sticky buns just annoyed me. So, but it was still really good, really fun, and I'm always going to enjoy her writing because that really made up for it. And I cried my eyes out the last, like, 50 pages because everybody said even though they knew what happens to this certain character, it was still so beautifully written that you couldn't help but just cry about it. So... I finished that in like a day and a half because it was so fast to read on my Kindle. So that was the first book that I read. And then the second book that I read over the 2024 release, but I'll explain why I started this book before I read that uh, 2024 one. The next book I ended up reading, I don't know why I'm pulling it up on Goodreads when I have the book, is Abby Jimenez's Part of Your World. I really was dying to read one of Abby Jimenez's books. I just found that so many people love her writing and this was probably my favorite book that I read last month. This book was so, oh my god, I love this book so much. Just the way that Abby Jimenez writes romance is so beautiful and the reason why I loved this book so much, and this was clearly a five star for me, I love it so much. I think about this book all the time because the way that she writes their two separate worlds because it's dual POV between um, Daniel and Alexis, those are the two main characters, um, is that he's like a farmer from like, oh, I forget what state, um, you know, he doesn't live in, like, a main city, and she's, like, a city doctor, and they, like, come together and end up forming a romance, and it's just so beautifully written. I just loved this book so much. I don't really want to go too much into it. I just wanted to go on obsessively about it for a couple minutes before I start going into why I loved it so much, but honestly, like, after I finished this book, um, again, I don't really want to go into more detail. That's pretty much like sums up the stories that they're just from two different worlds. She's a super rich doctor. He's um, a very uh, struggling um, kind of like handyman, but he also owns like this inn that he, he is struggling with. It's like a bed and breakfast, but it's very expensive to maintain. Um, and he's just, like, barely getting by. Um, but she, oh my god, just the way that she writes is so beautiful. I love this book so much. And you won't really understand why you love this until you read, like, the three part of your world books together. Because I ended up reading the two other books as well. 
And I just love the way that she makes like her books more so like interconnected standalones. But she brings like the other characters from the other books into her other books. And like I have not read any other romance authors like that. That's what makes her so unique and just makes her books so special. You just really have to go into this blindly and honestly trust me this was one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read. And this was actually probably one of the only books that I didn't cry until the very last page until I read the last page because like nothing in the book made me cry until the end until I read that last page and I just cried because I just thought it was such a beautifully written story and that was like the first time I think I've ever cried like just at the end maybe besides Kingdom of Ash when I finished like the entire series because like you go on such a journey with the characters with Throne of Glass but this, I just cried because it was so beautifully written. So I loved this book so much. That's all I'm going to tell you guys. I didn't finish it until um, like two days after I started it. So I got like probably like 100, maybe 120 pages, 130 pages into it. Um, because I didn't finish it until after I got halfway through this next book. But the reason why... I started this book the day after I started that one was because we were going on like a trip where um, we went, me and my mom and my brother took a trip to Philadelphia to see my cousins and my aunt and my uncle for their baby. Um, and I wanted to bring my Kindle with me on the train ride because the train ride was going to be like two and a half hours. Like, the train ride from like the LIRR to uh, Penn Station was going to be like an hour and then like we had to go on the Philadelphia train um, for another hour like from the Amtrak from Grand Central to Philadelphia. So I decided that I didn't want to read this book until that train ride. So I started this like the day after because I wasn't going to bring a physical book with me. It's so much easier just to bring the Kindle. So I had purchased Emily Henry's new book, Funny Story, and that's what I read on that train ride. And I got like, I think I got like 40, 45% of the way in. Like I was pretty far through it. And then I just finished it, I think the day after, um, or like two days after I finished Part of Your World. Because for some reason, Part of Your World took me a little bit longer to get through. But also like I was just so sleepy from the whole Philly trip and everything. Um... But I'm going to talk about this book. Let me just start actually doing my makeup. So the two main characters are Daphne and Peter. And basically their uh, story is that they both had broken up with their ex-boyfriend. Oh, no, ex-fiancés. And they end up rooming together. And that's basically like the whole story in a nutshell. But um, the... The twist is that they actually both um, end up getting invited to both of their ex-fiancés weddings because their ex-fiancés are actually marrying each other. It's so messed up, but um, Daphne's ex-boyfriend ends up, I mean ex-fiancé ends up cheating on her with... Uh, Oh my god, why do I keep forgetting his name? Peter's ex, uh, with Peter's, um, wait, oh my god. Daphne's ex-fiance, Peter, cheats on her with, oh my god, why am I getting so confused? What is his fucking name? It's not Peter, it's Daphne and the hell is the other miles not peter um peter ends up cheating on daphne with miles's ex fiance which is named petra and they're gonna end up getting married but petra and peter actually end up inviting um 
both of them to their wedding accidentally and um Daphne and Miles kind of drunkenly agree one night because they're like you know bonding and they're talking to each other because we they end up rooming together because she ends up having to find somewhere to live and she just so happens to know that Miles like is looking for a roommate and she ends up moving in with him and it's a really cute concept but you know the whole reason why you pretty much read this book or the main reason why I did is because I wanted to see like the awkward situation of when Miles and uh, Daphne go to Peter and Petra's wedding. But that actually doesn't end up happening in the book. There's like something that completely changes that um, story. And it, that kind of annoyed me because those two characters ended up not getting married. So they end up not attending the wedding. And that was like the whole thing I was looking forward to. And then I was like, oh, they broke up before the wedding even happened. So it honestly was kind of my least favorite Emily Henry book that I've read so far. And this was my third Emily Henry book because I had read Bee Tree just before this because I told you guys that that was going to be my last book in April. And I had to read that book before I read this one. And Beach Read is still my favorite book from her because I did end up reading one of her other books in May as well. And I'm actually on my last Emily Henry book right now. So I can tell you guys my full thoughts and give you guys a ranking of all of her books. Um, and also, like, I still really enjoy reading her books, but I gave Funny Story a four, just a solid four stars. I didn't feel like ranking it any higher or any lower than that. It was still enjoyable. It was still funny. I know when I read an Emily Henry book, I'm going to have a good time. But also, I know I'm just going to have great storytelling. But with this book, I just didn't feel the connection to the characters as much as I have in some, in some of her other books that I've read. Like, Charlie's still my favorite um male character in all of her books and book lovers even though book lovers is my absolute favorite book from her for some reason charlie is still my favorite character i love him so much and i liked the characters in this book but they were just i don't know the story got a little bit boring to me towards the end and i just like wasn't really feeling it anymore but it wasn't like a struggle to get through like her books are still so easy to read and I think the reason why I read so much romance now is because I know with romance books, you can always count on a good story. Like, sometimes fantasy books can be really disappointing. Sometimes thrillers can be really disappointing. But with romance books, I feel like I'm never going to rate them, like, lower than a three unless it's Bride. Because Bride was just, like, too different for Allie Hazelwood. And I did end up giving her a second chance at the end of this month. But with this book, I just wasn't really connecting with this book as much as I had with her other books. So I just gave it a four star. It was still a good book though. But I'm actually glad that I read this on Kindle because honestly, I feel like this is the one Emily Henry book that I don't need to actually own. <laughs> but also like it was only available on hardcover. Why is this taking me so long to blend this freaking shade? I think that looks pretty good. I don't really care. Um, so yeah, it was good. It wasn't great, but I still liked it. It was still a good time. So then the next book that I finished, because I started this book at the beginning, uh, or like actually towards the middle of April, and I finished it the first week of May, I finally finished uh, my first audiobook this year. Because most of the other audiobooks that I've listened to, I've either just listened to while I'm reading the physical book. But this was the first full audiobook that I finished this year. And this was the first book in the Boys of Tommen series. And this is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. I absolutely hate this cover, but it's so annoying. And oh my god, I'm not going to go too much into Boys of Tommen because I feel like I'm probably going to make an entire video on it by the time that I finish this series. But I absolutely 
love this series and if you decide to um read this I highly highly suggest you listen to the audiobooks I mean they are all free on Kindle Unlimited which is actually awesome and I did probably read a hundred pages of this book on Kindle so I actually didn't listen to it fully on audio but Probably 80% of it I listened to in audiobook form and I absolutely loved it. This was definitely a easy five stars for me because these two characters, you absolutely fall in love with them. So I'll just give a brief background. So the two main characters are Shannon and Johnny and it's dual POV. Um, and Shannon is a 16-year-old teenage girl that has to be transferred to the boy, to the uh, Tommen school because she is getting brutally and viciously bullied in her school. And, like, her mom and, and her dad, um, mostly her dad thinks that it's um, her fault and her father is a completely mentally and physically abusive father and basically um, her and Shannon and Johnny are kind of from two different worlds and also Johnny is a little bit older than her but there's like this one day it's like her first day at Tommen because she has to transfer to this school because her mom is like insisting <gasps> on making her dad let her go to uh Tommen because she is getting brutally bullied and this is like the one good thing that her mom actually does for her but then there's like so many unfortunate events that happen throughout the book that you see you think that her mom has her best interests at heart but she really doesn't um, like, she thinks that she's doing something good for her, but she's not really, um, doing that. But you'll see later in the series, if you do end up reading these, that she doesn't really have her best interests at heart. Wow, I've been hitting pan on some ColourPop shades really easily lately. I just hit pan on this other shade that I'm using, but also, like, I've had this palette way longer than the other two um palettes that I've hit pan recently on this one I've had for like over a year so it's not as bad if I hit pan on this one but I've hit pan on one shade in the Beauty and the Beast palette already but anyway um and I've only had that palette for like two weeks <laughs> so um there's, like, this one day where she is, like, walking across campus because she accidentally forgot her phone in one of the girls' bathrooms. But also, this, like, makes her, like, extremely late to her first class. But she decides to cut across, like, this field in between the buildings. And this is where, you know, Johnny is playing and training for his rugby because rugby is, like, his life. Um, there's just so much about this book. It's so good that I can never shut up about these. I read these because of Larry Reads, and she's, like, my favorite, um, favorite booktuber, and she constantly talks about that Boys of Tom and is pretty much her favorite book series ever, and I was, like, dying to read them, and I'm absolutely loving them. They are so good. Um, so anyway, Shannon, um, cuts across this field and he's training his rugby and he's, he accidentally ends up kicking the rugby ball into her face and that basically unfolds all the events of this book. Um, and he tries to stay away from her and her mom, like, comes to the school and thinks that Johnny did it on purpose and from this day on, she pretty much hates Johnny and doesn't want Shannon to date him or have anything to do with him. But he tries and stays away from her for, like, as long as possible. But, like, all the events of this book are just so well written. And, oh, my God, 
the way that she balances drama and humor in this book I think is absolutely genius because there are some really hard things that happen in this book but there's also some freaking hysterical things that happen too. Gypsy is like my favorite character ever in any book I think I've ever read besides uh Rizond and um Akatar, he's like my second favorite. He is like the funniest person, and I freaking love Johnny too. But Gypsy is like the comedic relief of this book, and I love that she did that with this. But also, Shannon and Johnny are very funny too. But Gypsy's interactions with each character is just so hysterical that. Like, as soon as you read something uh, sad that happens to Shannon, she, like, balances out in the next chapter so perfectly with Gypsy's humor that you kind of just get uplifted again. And I kind of love those kind of books. And also, like, I really love that in, like, serious TV shows as well. I think that's why Six Feet Under is, like, my favorite show of all time is because that show can get so sad and so dark but somehow they pull you out of it like five minutes later making you like hysterically laugh and I feel that same way about reading this series so this was definitely a five star for me I highly suggest it again if you're if you're um planning on reading these I highly suggest listening to the audiobooks because the voice actors are incredible I love the two uh Shannon and Johnny's voices they're amazing and I'm actually on the second half of the second book I've been listening to the second half of keeping 13 and again I'm absolutely loving that it and it's probably going to be another five star for me because I can't get enough of this series I'm so excited to listen to the other two books and also then I can be prepared to uh read taming seven which is the newest book that came out in the Boys of Tom and series, but I've been seeing very mixed reviews about that one. Um, even Larry Reeds didn't give it a five stars, but I'm still excited to read it. And what's funny is that it's actually like the shortest book in the Boys of Tom and series. So again, I'm very interested in reading it. So um, that's basically why I wanted to start these is because I wanted to read the most current one but I don't know when I'm going to get to it because I still have the other two books to listen to. And that's probably going to take me another month or two to read them. But also, like, I have enough physical books and books on Kindle to read. So it's not going to be a big deal if I have to listen to these books a little bit longer. So, but again, such an amazing series. I loved it so much. So that was my second five star for the month because part of your world was already a five star for me. So let me just finish up my eyeshadow and then we'll talk about the next books. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the next two books that I read, which were a fantasy. It's not a duology. It's actually going to be a trilogy. And I think the the book that's coming out later this year is going to be the last book. Um, but I read Alex Astor's Light Lark series and the first one is Light Lark and the second one is Nightbane. I don't know why these books are so hated because I actually really enjoyed these. I thought these were great. These were really fun. Um, I'm gonna have to look up what these books are actually about again but I guess like they weren't really that memorable for me. I basically just want to read the synopsis and then pretty much you're going to have to go into them blindly but there's like a lot of stuff that develops in it that is really really fun and I just had a great time. I thought they were really good but also like they took me a little bit longer to get through at the time because my heart wasn't really into or wanting to read fantasy at that point. I just wanted to read more romance books. Um, but I still got through these. They took me about almost four days each to read, though. I felt like I was kind of just zoning out, but not because they were bad books. I just felt like I wasn't really into them as much as I was going to be, but also, like, I still feel like I would have rated these books not quite five-star. They were both 4.5 for me. I still had a great time. I think they were really, really good. Um... 
So basically these books are about, the first one says, Welcome to the Centennial. Centennial. Every 100 years, the Island of Lightlark appears to host the Centennial, a deadly game that only the rulers of six realms are invited to play. I feel like she didn't really concentrate on this game, though, and kind of made it more about that um, if the rulers don't play these games and if one of them dies, their whole kingdom and their line of having any potential heirs dies with them. And that's like the big uh, twist that you don't really um, figure out or kind of go in blind blindly when you're reading them. Um, but also she didn't really concentrate too much on when the island would disappear. She kind of like went over that pretty quickly in the books. But as you read them, like, it's not like that was a bad thing though. It's just like, you know, she could have went into it a little bit more, but there's so much that happens that like, it still keeps your interest, and the action was so good, the romance was great, and I just had a great time reading both of them. They were really a lot of fun, and again, I don't mind, don't know why these books are so hated, because I think they're great. Um, and then it says, um, the Centennial offers six rulers one final chance to break the curses that have plagued their realms for centuries. Each ruler has something to hide. Each realm's curse is uniquely wicked. To destroy the cursors, one ruler must die. Isla Crown is the young ruler of the Wilding. She doesn't know she's the ruler of the Wilding, but basically it says it in the synopsis, so you find out before she does. <laughs> um, and it says, A realm of temptresses cursed to kill anyone they fall in love with. They are feared, despised, and are counting on Ezla to... End the suffering by succeeding at the centennial. To survive, Isla must lie, cheat, and betray, even as love complicates. Why is this not? Okay. Love complicates everything, I guess. I don't know why it's not loading the rest of the synopsis, but basically her secret is that she is a heart eater, which is actually a really cool concept. And she goes through a lot as a character, especially a lot of physical pain. Um, but also she ends up falling in love with this uh, other ruler. But she ends up falling in love with two other rulers. And she has to basically choose who she wants to be with. Um, and that's, it's like kind of forms a love triangle, but it's not like a annoying love triangle. I really like the way that she wrote the love story in this as well, because it wasn't the main plot, because there was a lot of action and magicalness and fantasy happening in this book, and that's what I really appreciated about it, is that like, even though Perilous was better for me because of the banter between the two characters and I just loved the story so much. I feel like this is kind of very similar to it as well and I don't know why people don't compare these books over the Hunger Games and that people have also said that Powerless is kind of a combination between Red Queen and Hunger Games but I actually feel like it's a combination between Red Queen and this these books but yeah these were still really fun and then in the second one, I need to figure out who the two other characters are. I don't know why he's, she's not mentioning their names. Mm -hmm. I don't know why their names aren't in the synopsis. Um, let me just, I think it's in this synopsis. Um, I don't understand. I'm trying to get the two other, the character that she falls in love with is Oro, and he's, like, the ruler of, like, the good realm, where, like, you know, they're the good guys, and she falls in love with him, and the other ruler's name is, why do I have his name? He's, like, kind of the devil, and 
he's, you know, she's fall, she fell in love with him before she fell in love with Oro, but then she basically stays with Oro. Grim. Duh, his name is Grim. Hello. It's like evil itself. So, Grim pretty much threatens Oro and I Isla that if he doesn't, like, if she doesn't leave Oro for him, she's going to destroy Oro's kingdom and the uh, Wilding's kingdom. And also, Isla thinks that she is powerless, but actually she ends up developing powers because she ends up finding out that she's the queen of the Wildings. Um, so basically that's what happens in the second book is that he's threatening to destroy their lands and it's basically about their love uh, triangle again, but it's also like flashing back between her uh, past you know, experiences with Grimm and then going back to the present like every other chapter, which I really enjoyed as well. I kind of really like books that are in that format. And also they kind of leave you off on a cliffhanger like every other chapter. So it makes you read each book. And like the end of this was not anticlimactic. It actually leaves you on a cliffhanger about like what happens to the lands. And I think that's why I'm like, this is, there is no way this could be a duology. Because I'm like, if she left everybody off like that, I would be pissed. So, I think that's why there's a, a last book being, uh, that is coming out in November. So, now I'm ready for it to come out. And I'm super excited for it. I think it's called Skyscape or something like that. Let me see what it's called. I literally have it in front of me. It's called Sky Shade, so I'm very excited for it. So I enjoyed both of them. I thought they were both great. So that's basically what they're about. And, you know, again, Isla goes through some shit. She kind of reminds me of Aelin from Throne of Glass, where, like, you know, she makes a lot of sacrifices for her people and kind of endures, like, her pain for them. So I feel like that makes her a badass, strong character, and I really liked her, so... I thought they were really fun and entertaining and very magical, and they were really good. Okay, and then next up, like I said, I just wanted to read romances after that, so I read like four romances in a row, and the next one I had already started on Kindle like a couple of days ago, so I decided to read the second book in the Part of Your World series by Abby Jimenez, and it was called Yours Truly. And it's actually available on Kindle Unlimited for free. So that's why I don't have the physical book. If it wasn't available, I would 100,000% get it. I'm still thinking about just buying it just because I love her book so much and I just want to own all of them because I'm going to display all of them anyway. So I am thinking about just picking it up because I love her so much. But I, I probably won't do that until like next week. But anyway, this is the second book in the Part of Your World series. And this one is about um, Brianna and Jacob. And Brianna is actually pretty much um, Alexis's best friend in Part of Your World. So now this is her book. And that's what Abby Jimenez says about the characters, that this is Brianna's book. And basically, Jacob and Brianna are both doctors. And they both meet in the same hospital because they end up working together. And Brianna keeps on wanting to spend, like, a lot of time with him and, like, sneaks into, like, the closet at the medical supply closet at work. And they end up having lunch together on their lunch breaks. And it's just so freaking adorable. And basically, um, Brianna just went through, like, a really hard divorce. And so did Jacob. And they both realized that they just weren't right for their partners. So they end up divorcing them. And, you know, her ex is really, really, uh, he's an asshole. He, like, cheated on her, and he ends up with another woman. And basically, like, this, it's very similar to the scenario of funny story because they end up fake dating in this as well. Actually, that happens in funny story as well is that, um... Miles and Daphne pretend to be together to make their exes like jealous but they actually are kissing and you know hooking up together like halfway through the book. In this book it takes way longer for them to actually 
be like kissing and dating for real but they end up making an agreement where they're going to start dating each other because she wants to help out Jacob um not just because of this other situation that happens but again there's just so much that happens in Abby Jimenez's books but she's so good at balancing the character's stories that none of it is distracting from the romance it just makes the romance that much better when they actually get together like she's just such an amazing writer like I haven't had that from any other writer besides her her romance books like any other romance writer because they just make so much sense when the stories actually come together but basically she wants to help out Jacob get through like his family events that he has to go to because like everybody knows that he went through a hard divorce and she agrees to help him out to attend these family events but they end up like falling in love with each other but they don't end up kissing until like page 300 but it's just like so beautifully written and it's not like annoying with the build-up like it got slightly annoying I was like can they just kiss already but then when you actually see the reason why they didn't kiss until way later in it makes so much sense because they kind of become like really close friends before they end up falling in love with each other like they were already in love with each other but they don't end up dating or kissing each other yet because they went through such hard divorces and they want to make sure that they're making the right decision because they don't want to get their hearts broken again and it was just I just found that way better than um the way that funny story was written and I just loved this book so much and this was another five star for me I cried a couple of times in this book. Just, again, the way that she writes is just so beautifully written. And I just enjoyed this book so much. And I ate this one up, too. This one I finished in, like, two days. It was so easy to read. And I just was dying to see what happened with Jacob and Brianna. I just loved it so much. So I loved that. It was so good. And then I actually read another book on Kindle, and this was a 2024 release as well. And this came out from two of my favorite romance authors as well. So the next book I read was Christina Loren's The Paradise Problem. And this was, again, the next book from Christina Loren. Um, and I have read three of their books before this. This is actually the fourth book that I've read from them. They actually have a lot of books. I don't think I'm ever going to read all of them. But I know I can count on Christina Loren to write a great book. And this book was really, really cute. I really liked it. Um, basically, this book is about um, Liam and... What is the female character's name? Anna. And Anna is like a struggling... Uh, basically supermarket cashier she doesn't really have that much money and Liam actually ends up being her uh husband because she has to marry him for like financial security and they end up like not really being roommates they're kind of like living across the hall from each other I think that's what happens and like basically she doesn't really know anything about him the only reason why she married him is to have financial security to like have like to pay off her college loans and stuff like that but Liam ends up coming to her with a problem and this ends up becoming the paradise problem because he needs someone to come with him on this trip because she ends up finding out that he is the son of the uh man that owns all of these supermarkets that she is actually working for and he's like a billionaire or millionaire or whatever that owns this supermarket chain and basically like uh he has to prove to his family that his marriage because she thought that they had just gotten divorced he ends up moving out and they're they're divorcing and you think it's like some serious thing but then you find out like 30 pages in that it was just 
she married him just for financial security and it's actually really funny she's like oh my god he's leaving and you believe that you know she's upset about it but then you see that she really wasn't because it was all just a sham but base you know that is illegal so they have to prove to everyone that they actually had a legitimate marriage and they really have to prove this because they can't actually divorce and they actually were never actually divorced because they have to go on this trip because my, uh, since Liam is like this millionaire, the only way that he's going to get his money is if he proves that he had a legitimate marriage. So that's like in his like grandfather's clause because the grandfather was actually, you know, the millionaire first and then he passed it down to his son which is Liam's father and Liam is kind of like a complete asshole like he doesn't really care about his kids he kind of guilts his kids constantly that you know he has the money and he doesn't think his kids are ever going to be good enough because they need money in order to uh, be good enough for him but also like Liam has to prove to his father that he doesn't want to take over the company because his father is pressuring him to be the next CEO, but Liam doesn't want it. And that's basically what happens in the book. So they go on this trip and they have to prove to his family that they were actually legitimately married. And it was just such a fun time. I knew when I read this, I was just going to have fun. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars because I just thought that the epilogue was a little bit too long. It was a 20-page epilogue and that honestly brought it down a little bit for me. Not that I didn't enjoy the, the, the story because I thought it was so much fun, but honestly, I feel like it could have been like 10 pages shorter. Even though the book was only like 320-something pages, I just, or 330-something pages, um, I just felt like that made it a lot longer. But anyway, it was still such a fun time and I absolutely loved reading it and it just took like little to no time to finish. It was just a really fun time. So it was just really good, really fun and I enjoyed it. So, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish talking about all of these books right now. I think I'm going to talk about two more and then I'm going to have to leave because I'm going to my boyfriend's. But the other two books that I read were both such bangers for me. And I, I felt like, oh wait, hold on. Did I read this book? Oh my god, I skipped over a book. Oops. <laughs> I did not read The Paradise Problem after yours truly. I actually read another romance before that. I'm sorry. That was stupid. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, Paradise Problem was the ninth book I read. I actually read this book before. So let's talk about this book really quick before we move on to number 10. And I think I'm going to leave and then talk about the last five books when I get home. That's still so many books. Oh, my God. Um... Oh my god, really? So the book that I read after Yours Truly was Emily Henry's Happy Place. I'm sorry about that, but we have to talk about this first, obviously. Um, and I really wanted to read this because, again, I really just wanted to read another Emily Henry book. And since the weather was getting warmer, I just, like, had such a craving to read this. And I heard that this was a really, really good book. Probably, like, everybody's second favorite besides Beach Read. And again, I just really wanted to read another Emily Henry book. And this book and the next, like, four books weren't even on my TBR for this month. So, But I ended up reading all of them just because I really wanted to. And then I went back to a couple of books on my TBR. But basically, like, only Part of Your World, Nightbane, Light Lark, and, like, two other books were on my TBR. And some... And basically, all these books in between were not on my TBR, but I still wanted to read them. So anyway, this is about Harriet and Wynne, and they are ex, uh, exes. They broke up. They were engaged to uh, be together, but they um, ended up breaking up. But they haven't told any of their friends yet. And basically, 
her and Wynn are part of this friend group that go to this place every single summer and basically it's their happy place because they all come together like once a year to go to I, I think it's like South Carolina I don't remember where it is it doesn't really matter and they all come together for um their friend's wedding and these two friends are also in their friend group as well um and then there's another I don't remember the rest of their names um, and then there's another girl that's in their friend group, and she has, uh, she's the only one that's actually married, and she's a lesbian, and she's with another woman, and she goes on this trip with her, uh, with her wife. So, they all come together on this trip for this marriage, but honestly, everybody wants to just have like the perfect trip and want to be together and basically it's all about Harriet and Wynn's like past of coming together to be engaged and basically it goes back and forth between their past and their present and that's basically how um People We Meet on Vacation is written too. So I actually feel like Happy Place and People We Meet on Vacation is similar. But also I really enjoyed this book because this was like the first like different concept for Emily Henry. Because I feel like with each Emily Henry book with Book Lovers, Funny Story, and Beach Read that the female characters are very isolated but again like Beach Read was so perfectly written that like I don't have any complaints about it but like I feel like Book Lovers and Funny Story kind of followed the Beach Read formula where um they don't really have any friends they are like recently divorced or like they just don't really have any outside connections because their world was you know their fiance or their husband this book was very different for Emily Henry because it's about a group of friends and the reason why these two characters Harriet and Wynn uh get together is because they're in the same friend group and I really enjoyed that so I really liked this book a lot I'm not going to give anything else away basically you know it ends up pushing them back together and they end up falling in love and you know, you see, like, how their friendship develops and all of that and their romance, again, of whether or not they should end up together. But I just really loved the way that this book was written. I really enjoyed it. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The only reason why it wasn't quite 5 star for me is because it was very sad. But the next book I read is probably the most similar to this book after The Paradise Problem because I needed something a little bit happier and fun after I read Happy Place, so I read The Paradise Problem, and that one did not make me cry. That one was just a good time. Because like I've said before, I feel like so many romances are just so sad that, like, sometimes you just need a light, fluffy romance, again, like The Paradise Problem, to kind of take you out of it. So again, it was a 4.5 for me. It wasn't quite a 5 star. Um, Because they didn't get back together till a, a, a whittle, a little while later. But I still enjoyed it. I still really loved it. And this is still, like, my second favorite as of right now. But I need to see how people we meet on vacation ends. Because Happy Place was just so good. So, that was the next book. And now I will end with this book right now. And then I'm going to have to go. And then I still have another five books to talk about that <laughs> after this. Because these videos are always so long but then the next book that I read I was like I just need to finish this series and I'm dying to read this book so I just decided to read Abby Jimenez's Just for the Summer which is the last book in the Part of Your World series or I believe it is I don't think there's any other ones in this universe but I could be wrong I think she announced it on Twitter like a couple weeks ago but I haven't seen anything about it I probably just have to look it up on Reddit um so this book is about Emma and Justin and I believe Emma is mentioned in Part of Your World as well. And I believe so is Justin. So this is their story. And basically, um, let me just grab my highlighter and my lip gloss. Okay, and basically, they both believe that they're cursed. They end up dating, like, people for, like, a little while. And then they always end up 
being broken up with by the people that they date and the people that break up with them end up finding like their love of their lives after they date them and they always end up getting engaged to somebody else. And basically, they connect online. They don't know each other. They don't even live in the same state. And basically, Emma is always moving around with, like, her best friend. And um, she's, like, the type of person that never really wants to settle down. But she wants to find someone that, you know, has a constance in her life. But also, like, the way that she lives is not really practical to be with somebody forever because she's constantly moving or going on vacations or taking temporary jobs because her and her best friend are both nurses. And that's how it, all the three of these books are connected is that they all have some kind of medical connection is that, you know, Alexis is a doctor, Brianna <gasps> was a doctor as well, and then in the last book... Emma is a nurse with her best friend. But they constantly, like, go on trips with each other and take, like, temporary nursing jobs. So what happens is that she keeps on talking with Justin online and they end up really forming a, co a connection um, that she ends up going to surprise him in his state and just shows up and like she kind of just takes a leap of faith and they start going out with each other but the reason why this book is so freaking adorable is that justin keeps on making like these itineraries for their dates and she he keeps on sending her like these check boxes of like do you want to do this option one option two like go to the movies go to this go to that and then he, like, sends her, like, a checklist or, like, a rating system later on, like, how the date went. And it's so adorable. But they also, like, form this agreement with each other and, like, this contract where they're not going to be dating each other for too long. Because they basically just want to test out this theory on whether or not they're the problem on the reason why people break up with them or if it's just because they haven't found, you know, the person they need to be with. But they end up falling in, in love with each other and just the way that it's told is so beautifully written and obviously this was another five star for me. But I kind of struggled with giving this one five stars just because it is very sad and of course I was crying my eyes out in some parts of this book but again the way that she writes romance is so beautifully written but basically um Emma has a very um neglectful mother growing up and the mother just ends up like showing up um on this trip um well not really a, well yeah it is a trip for her but she ends up showing up and like basically you know kind of shocks Emma that she even shows up there and she's trying to be like a fun mom and wants her to be you know um oh my god there's so much that happens in this book like it's crazy she tries to be you know there for her but she's not ever really there for her because she neglected her like her whole life and then you find out so much stuff about the mother. Like, the mother was basically keeping Emma a secret, like, her whole life. And she didn't tell uh, Emma about any of her living family. She just kept her for herself. But also, she would leave her in the house alone all the time. And basically, she had to fend for herself. And, like, one time, her mother disappeared for, like, a week. And left her, like, $20 for food when she was, like, a like a preteen she wasn't even a teenager yet and I was surprised that child services didn't get involved at that point because like was she going to school like who knows but like that's what made me struggle with giving it a five star was just because it was extremely sad but at the same time the way that she writes the romance it's still always the romance that is the core of her writing and that's why her books are five star for me because it never distracts from the romance and it just makes their connection like so much stronger with each other. Oh my god, again, there's so much that happens in this book. And also Daniel has, not Daniel, Justin, um, his mother is actually going to prison soon. 
um, but he didn't want to burden um, Emma with this information because he ends up having to become the legal guardian of his three other siblings because his mother is going to prison and she's going for like five years. So he's going to end up having to take over taking care of them because they're all... Uh, one of them is like four years old, the second one is 12, and the third one I believe is like 15 or 16, and he's going to have to take care of all of them. So it's just, it's so good. It's so beautifully written. I just love her book so much, but that's basically all I'm going to give you guys. I could talk about this book for forever, but I'm not going to because that's going to be too spoilery, but I have to go. I'm going to start talk about the last five books later so bye okay so now i'm back from my boyfriend's house and i wanted to talk about the five other books that i read in the month of may um so the next book that i read after just for the summer was uh holly jackson's new release which is the reappearance of rebel price i just really wanted to read quite a few 2024 releases in the month uh that were released in april or may i think this release like Actually, this released on the same day as Just for the Summer did, and I read both of them one right after the other, and I didn't even know that this book actually came out on the same day. So anyway, this book is all about the main character, Belle, and her mother's name is Rachel Price, and basically she reappears like maybe a hundred pages into the book, and you know, Belle pretty much thinks that her um, mother is gone and she hasn't heard or seen or had any contact with her for about 16 years. Um, but all of a sudden she reappears and um, her, she, P Belle has been living with her father this whole time and some strange things start happening when Rachel Price comes back to them and she has to start living like in their house because where else is she going to live? So she starts living there but she thinks that there are constant things that are kind of holes in Rachel Price's story on where she actually was. Like she, she keeps on saying that she was taken from this man that she didn't know who they were and basically, things start escalating from there. And Belle is basically the only person that doubts her mother's story. She's also working with these two guys that are making a documentary out of this case. Sorry, there's like fuzzies flying everywhere. And she's the only one that doubts uh, Rachel Price's story. Like, everybody else is like, you're just being paranoid, except for... Um, the, like, director's, like, right-hand uh, filming guy. Like, he films all the clips for this and um, for this documentary, and they end up teaming up together. It's kind of similar between Pip and um, the other main character in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but they're not solving a murder. They're obviously solving what happened to Rachel Price after she returns because her story is kind of wish-washy, but there's a whole reason as to why she can't tell Belle what really happened to her. This is actually like a really dark family secret, and it was just so good. I rated this a five stars. I felt like just for the summer and this book really got me out of kind of a little bit of a reading slump. I think it was because, like I said, I wasn't reading the genre that I wanted to read. Um, that's how I felt about romance. Like at the end of February, I was so over reading romances after only reading two that year because I only read two because I had read those right after I read Akatar and Throne of Glass because those were the two book series that I started off the year with um and I just wanted to read a thriller and this was just such a banger I finished this in a day and a half because last I think it was last Wednesday I can't remember I just only went out of the house once and I was determined to finish this because with thrillers you really just that's the tr problem with thrillers is that you literally can't put them down but when you read a bad book or just you are, aren't really feeling the genre that you wanted to read or you feel like you're reading a little slow, trust me, a thriller is the way to read fast. 
or it's the way where you just can't stop reading because you have to know what happens. And that's how I felt about this book. I was like, what actually happened? And it was so good. I actually think that this is Holly Jackson's best book. It was just so good. I still love the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, but this book was like amazingly written. I just loved it. Okay, and then of course, after I read a thriller, I kind of wanted to offset it with a romance, and I felt like I needed to finally read another one of my Allie Hazelwood books because they've just been sitting on my shelf, and I've been saying that I want to give her another chance. So the next book that I finally read from Allie Hazelwood was Check and Mate. Um, this book was more enjoyable than Bride. Um, I liked it. I thought it was cute, but I didn't really love this one either. So the two main characters are Mallory and Nolan, and Mallory actually has a family of two, uh, si two sisters and her mother. And basically, Mallory has to take care of her family because they are struggling financially because her mother has like a serious case of arthritis, so she can't really work that much. So Mallory is basically the one that has to take care of everyone. She didn't go to college just to take care of her family, but she is also struggling working. She actually gets fired from her job, and she actually starts playing chess. And the reason why she has played chess is because her father... Um, wanted her to be good at chess growing up. He saw how talented she was playing chess and basically like he took her on as her as his like success for, successor pretty much because he was like a big uh chess player while he was alive and some tragic accident happens that he ends up getting killed and she ends up playing chess professionally cuz she gets fired from her job. And she obviously needs a source of income, so she starts working, playing professional chess, and she meets Nolan, which is, like, the best, he's the best, best, can I speak? The best chess player in the world, and basically, you know, they form a rivalry between each other, but also they develop a romance, and honestly... <sighs> I wish that there was more rivalry between the two main characters and a little bit more tension because by the time they ended up getting together, it was around like 200 or more pages in. And I feel like sometimes with some books that don't really have... I didn't really care about the main characters too much in this book. The only thing that I really cared about was the way that she wrote about chess, which was actually really fun. But the whole reason why you read this book or the reason that I read this book is because you want to see Nolan and Mallory play each other at the end of the book. And Allie Hazelwood doesn't really write the ending like that. She just writes the ending as like a news article about like who beat who. But I felt like that would have added so much to this book if that was an epilogue after you had like five more pages of them playing each other at the end of the book. Because the last like 40 pages that you think are, is like the last part of the, the chess match. I like how she broke up the sections of this book. But the last part was called Endgame and I was so excited that that like at least last 15 pages or something were going to be them playing each other, but it wasn't. So I felt like that was a bit of a letdown for me. Also, the main character, she, you know, was down on herself quite a lot. She thought that she was never good enough to play professional chess, but... I do understand that chess players do that a lot. They are very hard on themselves. When I watched The Queen's Gambit, she was very hard on herself. Um, so I didn't, that didn't bother me, but it was to the point where it was getting to be very annoying by like the end where she was in the final match with Nolan because they are the two best tennis. But why do I keep on wanting to say tennis? Chess players in the world and she still had like zero confidence and she kept on like putting herself down constantly. I didn't really love that because at the, you know, the time that the romance happened, I didn't really care. Like I didn't really feel like too much for the two main characters. 
that I just wanted to see them play chess again. So it kind of fell flat a little bit for me, like especially the ending. So I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. It was enjoyable, but again, this is now the second book from Allie Hazelwood that I wasn't really crazy about. And a lot of people say that this is like their favorite Allie Hazelwood book. So we will see when I finally get to reading Love Hypothesis and Love Theoretically, but it was still a good time. I still had fun. Like, again, I know when I read a romance, I'm going to read a good book. Like, and I can always count on a romance to be good. Like, I haven't really read a bad romance book yet besides Bride. So, okay. Then the next book that I read has been on my TBR for so long and I finally decided to read uh, Heather Fawcett's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And I did not like this book. <laughs> it was very all over the place with my ratings this month. It's very funny because, like, I, I haven't really had a month like that where I, like, really dislike one book. One book was kind of mid and some books were good. And then some, I had a lot of five stars this month too. I I read some great books this month and some not so great books. And I just found that I did not care about the main characters in this book whatsoever. And I feel like if I don't really care about the plot already, I need to care about the characters or I need to care about the plot unless like about the characters. Like, Check and Mate, I was enjoying the plot, but I didn't really care about the main characters that much. So I still had fun reading it. I still had a few laughs. It was still very fast-paced and easy to read. This is only 317 pages, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll read that really quickly. I mean, I still read it in two days, but every time I sat down to read this book, I didn't want to read it. It was just so boring to get through because I feel like she was trying to tell too many stories about the main character at the same time. And like none of these plot lines I really cared about to come to fruition. I was like, I really don't care what happens to the main character at this point. I thought that it was going to be a lot more... Like, Emily Wilde is writing an encyclopedia of fairies, and I honestly really wanted to see, like, the types of fairies that she was observing, why they're different from the other fairy, and, like, the magicalness of each fairy and, like, what they do. But it wasn't really much of that. It was mostly between the two main characters. I forget the, the other main character's name. I think his name is Professor Bambleby. Um, he is actually a fae, and he has been known to steal, you know, people's work, but they don't really explain why he did that, which, again, was a, another plot line that I didn't really care about. But she's writing this book because it's never been done before. I skipped over another book again. Why am I doing that? Okay. The next book I read after Check and Mate was a Kindle read. Why do I keep on doing that? Okay, I'm sorry. Dumbass. So the 13th book I read was a Kindle read. And I bought this randomly on Kindle because it was only $1.99. And what's so funny is that I went to Barnes & Noble with three of my other friends the day before. And my friend pointed out this book. And I was like, ooh, that sounds like a book I would want to read. But I actually, it popped up on my Amazon for only $1.99, like literally the next day. I'm like, are they listening to me again? Um, but the next book I decided to read was Murder Your Employer, McMaster's Guide to Homicide, Volume 1 by Rupert Holmes. I had such a good time with this book. This book was hilarious. I actually thought... It was going to be a bit darker than it was, but it was hysterical. It was so funny. Basically, the main character, what is his name? Um, why do none of these synopsises actually mention the main character's names? Basically, the main character wants to murder his employer, but he fails at murdering his employer because he's not trained to murder somebody so he actually gets 
kidnapped by these two ex-police officers that actually work for a murder school, like a murder university, and they take him there, and basically they teach him how to professionally kill your employer or kill the person that you want to kill. And it was just hysterical the way it was done, and it's not just his POV. There's two other female characters that we also learn about that we also see who they want to plan to murder as well and it just made it so much fun i just had such a good time this was so close to being a five star for me i rated it 4.5 but honestly it's a really really high 4.5 or even a 4.75 it was so close to being a five the only reason why i made it a five not a five was because I'm not really going to think about this book too much again, but I had such a good time reading it. I would recommend it to anyone who just wants to read something funny and ridiculous. I thought this was such a good time. I actually ended up listening to the last three chapters on Spotify Premium because I found out that this book was included in Spotify Premium, which was awesome. And it's actually narrated by Neil Patrick Harris. So that just made the book so much better and it was actually really fun to listen to him narrate. It was also like a a British narrator that, you know, narrated the internal dialogue and then from the main character's POV journal cuz the main character journals in the book is Neil Patrick Harris's voice and that was just such a fun time. I just loved this book. It was great. Um and what's so funny is that there is, like, a couple of pages of, like, their college schedule and class. And I just thought that was hysterical, like, all the classes that they need to take. It was just, like, details like that that made the book just so much fun. So I absolutely loved it. It was just a really fun time. I just thought it was going to be a little bit more serious when it came to the murders. Like, you know, they stabbed him in the chest or something like that. But it was kind of like, it was so funny because, like, the professors of the college always say, we are not uncivilized people. We don't want to make you, uh, but are you going to be a true murderer after this or have you always been? And that's what's hysterical about it is that they're like, no, I just want to commit this one murder because, you know, I'm a good person, but I want to murder my employer. And that's what made it so funny. So I could see this as like a Broadway play. I think that it would be hysterical. So anyway, loved that book, gave it almost a five stars. I would give it a 4.75. It was great. Um, and then Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, I gave it a two stars. I just don't even care to talk about this book anymore. I just didn't like it. So I ended up returning it because I was like, I'm just so over this book. But every time I sat down to read it, I was like, oh, I'll get through like 50 pages because this book is like so short. I would get through like maybe 30 pages tops because it was such a bore and I was just not like enjoying this book so I read it because I had it and honestly I don't dnf books because I want to give you guys my opinion but it was so hard to get through so hard so then I was like I need a fast-paced book to get me out of this really bad mood because I was like I really don't want to read anything because I thought this book was terrible but honestly if you like it I'm not gonna knock you for it I just thought it was boring I'm not saying that cozy fantasy isn't for me because I honestly do want to read more cozy fantasy I just don't know if this series is for me but I still have map of the underland so I have to finish it or read it at some I mean I have to read it at some point but I'm not going to read it anytime soon. I didn't even put it on my TBR or I was going to this month. But I didn't like this book so much that I ended up taking it off. And I'll read it when I get to it, I guess. But anyway, the last book that I read in May was The House Made by Frida McFadden. And this has been on my TBR for months at this point. And I was like, I just want a fast-paced, easy book to read. 
before the month is over. And I started this on May 30th and I finished it May 31st because Frida McFadden's books take like no time to read. They might take you like six, seven hours tops. Like they're just so fast paced and all of her books are mostly all of her books are available on Kindle Unlimited. So you get them, you get through them even faster than you think you would. So this was actually going to be on my TBR for this week, for the first month, first week of the first month of June, the first week of June. But I ended up reading it at the end of May because I was like, I just need something fun and fast paced and I want to read a thriller. I was like, I don't want to read a romance. I was like, I want something like super exciting and enthralling for me to just finish super quickly. And I absolutely loved this book, but everybody says that this is pretty much her best book. So Nina Winchester is hired to be a housemaid for, um, no, that is not her name. What is the... Millie. Millie is hired to be a housemaid for the Winchesters, and the wife's name is Nina, and the uh, husband's name is Andrew. And basically, Nina is just like a neurotic housewife, and she's like super messy. She doesn't clean up after herself. She's like really gross. But Andrew makes it look like he's, like, the most perfect husband, and Millie doesn't really understand why Andrew is married to Nina, and Nina keeps on putting Millie into, like, these really crazy situations, and, like, anything that Millie does that Nina asks her to do is either something that she claims that she never asked her to do or she'll just yell at her about it or make her look bad in front of her husband about it or her daughter. And Nina has a daughter, I forgot the daughter's name, it doesn't really matter, um, that is actually Nina's daughter but not Andrew's and she actually never let Andrew legally adopt her. So that's already like a first sign that it's like kind of bizarre that she has been married to him for years and for some reason he uh, never was able to adopt her. So the um, events just keep getting crazier from there and honestly what you think about the housemaid is like nothing compared to what actually goes on in the book. The first part is all from Millie's perspective and then the second part is all from Nina's perspective and once you get Nina's story it is mind-blowing. It's so good. Just so you know none of the characters appear as to what they seem. They're all completely different. I mean, I guessed some of the twists, and I thought that there was something fishy about each of the characters. I'm like, I don't think any of them are innocent. There's also the reason why the housemaid's uh, cover is like this is because the door, the, um, the room that the housemaid stays in is an attic. An attic, not an attic. Oh my god, an attic. And it only locks from the outside. You can't lock it from the inside. And Millie notices on the um, inside door that there are scratch marks made. And she's wondering what, like, if somebody was trapped in this room before she started staying here. And she always got, like, this creepy feeling staying in the attic. And this was, like, the first book that I got, like, that creepy feeling from since uh the only one left like I wanted that super creeped out feeling and I got that from this book and it was so good I'm not giving anything else away you just need to go into it as blindly as possible but I would highly suggest again if you're in a reading slump or if you need something fast-paced read a Freedom McFadden book they are so much fun I gave this a five stars it just was so good and I'm just so glad that I ended off the month with a banger. So again, I had a lot of five stars this month. I had Part of Your World. I had uh, Yours Truly, Just for the Summer, The Reappearance of Rebel Price, and The Housemaid. So three romances and two thrillers. That's really good. So, and Binding 13. So I actually had six 
five stars this month. And that's the most that I've had since I read uh, Akatar. So I was pretty surprised by this month. And then I we read some mid books and some not great books and some really good ones. So yeah, it was a great reading month. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So please like and subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram at CW819 and check out my Poshmark at the same handle. If you want to know the products that I use, I always put all the products that I've used in my everyday makeup lookbook video. So you can just check that video out and you'll see everything that I use because if I tell you what I used in this video today, it'll be way too long. So right now I'm finishing up People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry and then I will have read all of Emily Henry's books and I'm super excited to do a ranking video on all of her books and which ones are my favorites and which ones are my least favorite. So yeah, I hope you guys have a good day. Bye and let me know what you've read this month. And please, please, please keep reading. Bye.